What's going on, guys? Eric Turner from Cover One, and you guys asked for it, so we're going to give it to you. We're going to start doing some more mock drafts, some, some videos, some articles. You guys love them. I hate them, but you guys want them, so we're going to give them to you. And so from time to time, our creators at Cover One are going to do some mock drafts in written form, sometimes as videos for the YouTube channel. And while you're here, please smash that like button, leave us a comment, let us know what you want us to do when it comes to content at Cover One. So while I do hate doing these mock drafts, we're going to use the PFF simulator to do that. I'm going to show you where my head is at as we walk through it. And each time I do a mock draft, I'm going to try to do something a little different and approach it from a different angle. So let's look at the roster right now. I created this depth chart a little while ago to kind of give you an idea where the Bills are roster-wise. So on the defensive side, you can see as far as the starters, they're pretty locked in. They brought Daquan back. They just brought in Austin Johnson, a good nose tackle, some three-tech ability. But you can see, I think still they could add another three-tech, more of a pass rusher element because Austin Johnson is really just a, a really good run stopper. So I think there's some you know, ability to add at that position. I do think that they need to add another boundary corner. I also do think that while Cam Lewis is a safety, but also kind of the backup to Taron Johnson, I do think that they may explore options at nickel behind Taron Johnson. But besides that, assuming Milano comes back healthy, assuming that Terrell Bernard is healthy, the defense is set pretty well um, when it comes to that. The edge position, I mean, they did add uh, Casey Tuhill. They still have Kingsley Jonathan as a depth player, AJ Epinesa is back. But I do think that, you know, even DN4 could be a possibility when you consider how many draft picks the Bills do have. But if you look to the offensive side, also pretty set when you're looking at the starters with Josh, James Cook, Stephon Diggs, Curtis Samuel as a Z, Shakir as a slot, Kincaid, and obviously Dawson Knox uh, will get considerable snaps this year. I do think Kincaid is the starter. Deion Dawkins. David Edwards slotted at left guard. I do think there is a, an, an area or time that they could look to upgrade that position. And even if that guy doesn't start right away, I do think competition for David Edwards can be had through the draft, uh, but also behind him. Uh, again, maybe the depth players, whether it's Alec Anderson, Jarvis, uh, they brought in Will Clapp, who uh, played center primarily last year with the Chargers. But he also has some guard ability. But right now, I have him currently the backup to Connor McGovern, who is sliding over from guard, Osiris Torrance, and then Spencer Brown. So you can see that most of the starters on both sides of the ball are pretty locked in. There are some positions that you could upgrade or add to. Um, and so we're going to try to do that through the draft. So let's take a look at the PFF simulator. Again, it's not this is not something I normally do, but we're going to start doing it a little more. So um, I have the speed to fast. We're going to do seven rounds. I tweaked the slider here for public versus PFF. Um, kind of split it down the middle there. And so we're going to start this off and see uh, where we go in round one. All right. So it looks like a guy that I would target if we're talking defensive side. Latu is uh, off the board there. Mitchell, the wide receiver from Texas, went uh, 27th. So on the board, we have uh, Tyler Newbin, obviously a really good safety from Minnesota. Uh, Brian Thomas is still on the board at pick 28. Zach Frazier, he's a center I really like, but not this early. Lad, this is going to be interesting because right now, looking at the top of this board, Troy Franklin's there. Um, Chop Robinson, that's another good one. I didn't expect to be there. He's kind of that fringe first, second round edge player from Penn State. I mean, with who's at the top of this board, I do like the wide receivers. If you're looking at a guy like Brian Thomas Jr., uh, I know he had a breakout season last year. I do think he has the breakout ability at the next level, and I still think he's ascending upward. I think he's a guy I really like here. So with this pick in the first round, I'm going to go with Brian Thomas Jr. Did not expect him to be there. He's a guy I have a second-round grade on. But he's a guy I didn't expect to be there with the 28th pick of the first round. Um, I do think he's a prototype X. Here's some of my notes on him. Easy speed, natural tracker down the field. He played basketball in high school, and you can see that kind of translate into his game. He uses some 
like basketball, Stevie Johnson crossover type releases. Um, and then when we're talking down the field, he tracks the ball really well. He had a you know double digit touchdowns. When we're talking vertical game, and when the ball's dropping in, he covertly uses like slight push offs to create separation as the ball is dropping in, which is really nice. And obviously, that vertical element, that vertical speed and explosive ability down the field is something the Bills' offense does need. Um, but I do think some of the negatives, uh, the timing of his route combinations and his routes needs improvement because there are times where he's just he's not open when he should be within the progression or timing of the play. I think he needs to improve there. And then adjusting to uh, underthrown passes down the field, I think he could do a little bit better in regards to that when it comes to uh, his effort and just getting his body in position to do that down the field. So again, ascending player, you know, you would like to see more production, um, consistent production over the span of his college career. But last year, he had a breakout year, and I do think he's an ascending player that the Bills could target with that 28th pick. All right, on to pick 60. And it looks like Worthy went just before us. Uh, Adisa Isaac is another second-round edge player I really like. Joan Ellis went in the second round as well. Xavier Leggett is also off the board at pick 53. So you can see there's a little run on wide receivers in the second round so far. So with pick 60, um, I would like to target usually day two. I'm looking at, you know, interior offensive linemen that could compete with David Edwards, who I think is really just like a, a one year stopgap. Christian Haynes. I mean, he had quite the senior bowl, very heavy handed player who I think projects really well as a guard at the next level. And honestly would fit in, uh, the Bills scheme really well. So he's a guy I'm looking at as far as interior offensive linemen go. That would keep McGovern at center, put Haynes at left guard. I think he could do some damage there. Let's see what we got as far as... Just go look at Edge. We got Edge. Nealon, his name has definitely been rising. It seems like the media and analysts are starting to catch up with his game. Power type guy. Awesome Booker is a name that's been out there a lot as well. Not really feeling any of these guys over Christian Haynes at this moment. So again, let's look at the the roster. I do think we need to add uh, defensive linemen, whether that's edge or interior defensive line. Um, corner, we can take a look at some corners and who's on the board. But I think right now Haynes is sticking out to me because of that left guard position, David Edwards. And again, he wouldn't even have to start right away. He can come in and compete, but if he loses, that's okay. He can get you know, some of the um, backup reps and even maybe extra offensive lineman reps. Um, if he beats out some of the other offensive linemen, let's take a look at corner Kyrie Jackson, Max Melton, Ooh, Renardo Green. If you know, he's more of a man cover corner. Uh, Cam Hart, he's another one, but he may be available in the next round. So I'm going to stick with my initial gut here. I'm going to go with Christian Haynes, the guard from. UConn and we're not making any trades in this one uh, maybe the next one we will but now it's going to fast forward to um, the the fourth round here because the Bills do not have a third round pick so at 128 now again we need to address interior defensive line maybe some kind of corner whether it's boundary nickel um, we got the offensive line interior offensive line and kind kind of set we got the wide receiver room rounding out really well with Diggs, samuel shakir matt collins uh shorter you got isabel and hamler kind of fighting for a roster spot and then you're throwing brian thomas jr in there They're like that's a fun room we're talking speed we're talking versus you know versatility we're talking guys that can play you know different positions but also adding elements down the field vertically but also underneath in yak situations because you have samuel now in the fold and shakir and, and just moving guys around, I do like that. So I'm going to try to look at what defensive linemen are on the board still. Let's look at interior first. McKinley Jackson, who he's a guy that flashed at the Senior Bowl as well. Christian Boyd, power guy that really stood out uh, during the All-Star circuit. Uh, Mason Smith, the more of like a traitsy type guy. Um, some of those guys are nice. I do like McKinley Jackson, especially because of his size. Um, and his um, his his skill set. He's more of an attacking 
attack oriented guy, but bigger. It kind of reminds me of if you're thinking about, you know, roles and traits that have played in this defense, like a Jordan Phillips. So he's a bigger guy, but he's not necessarily the plugger. He's more of a pass rush guy. As you can see, PFS right up uh, about quick penetration. He's an up the field type guy. I think he is a, a pretty good fit when you're talking size and the ability to penetrate and play that attack oriented style of defense. So that's interior. Let's look at edge. Nelson Caesar, another guy that was at the senior bowl had, you know, a couple nice days there. Gregor from Michigan. Uh, not really any guy standing out near the top here for me. All right. What about corner? Elijah Jones, Carson, Newton, Kalen King, same type of thing. No guys really standing out near the top here if we're talking value. A uh, running back's another position I think the Bills could, you know, look to add to. Obviously, they brought back Ty Johnson, um, and he had some pretty good runs. You know, you want that compliment to Cook. I think if we're talking compliment to Cook, we're talking physical guy, downhill runner, decisive like Ty Johnson. Um, but maybe with a little more upside and long-term value to the Bills. The funny thing about Curtis Samuel is that they can also put him in the backfield. So if they, if James Cook is out on a passing down and they need a, more of a receiving type player, they could honestly put Samuel back there and run some of those Texas and option routes with him uh, as a running back. So when it comes to a running back, I do think they need a compliment in the mold of Ty Johnson um, where you know he can come in and be – a downhill type runner. And I think Braylon Allen from Wisconsin, he's actually that guy. So I think in this round, in the fourth round with pick, you know, 128 here, I do think it's between the running back here, Allen, and let me get back here. Let's see, you. Allen. Let's look at the safeties too. Mustafa Braid, all right. I like uh, James Williams, more of a linebacker. All right, let's go back to interior. I do kind of like Allen here. I do like Allen in the fourth here. A good compliment, bigger back. You know, if you look at some of his measurable 6'2", 245, very young, as they note there, 20 years old on draft weekend. I do like his size and, and complimentary piece in the Bills offense. So it's between Allen McKinley Jackson. What do you guys think? Running back or defensive line? I do think the Bills have a major hole, especially if we're talking as a pass rusher and a rotational type guy. I think McKinley Jackson could be that. All right, let's go with McKinley Jackson on this play on this uh pick here. I like Allen. I do think they need him, but I that hole in that rotational interior defensive line room is really sticking out to me here. And I do think they need to bring several guys in. I'm going to do McKinley Jackson here in the fourth round. And, I mean, we lucked out here, right? You know, Braylon Allen is still there. And so he's sticking out like a sore thumb here. Look at the wide receivers, Johnson, Jack Saint, Tash Washington. He's a guy that really stood out. McCaffrey, I think he's going to be a sneaky good pro at the next level. You know what? Let's go with uh, let's go with Allen here. I, I like his complimentary um, measurables to James Cook in, in the running back room here. So the Bills have a ton of picks. As you can see, 144, 160, 163, 189, 200, 204, 248. That's a lot of picks, guys. I, I don't see being stay, staying put on all of those picks, if we're being honest here. All right, so we added wide receiver. We added a running back. We added another defensive tackle. And I, feel, I still think that we could add another wide receiver and another defensive tackle to compete in the room there. So let's look at some maybe some corners. Let's look at some corners now. See who's left here. To, to kind of round out the roster. Pritchett from Auburn. Do like him. See, there's not many names that really stand out in the corner room. 
besides like Pritchett just stands out for me. 6'1, 184, uh, comes from a, a you know, obviously a pretty good program in the SEC. Um, he can play outside, he can play inside, he's a returner. That's the type of versatility that I'm looking for in this system. I do think 6'1 is a little too big if we're talking bumping inside the nickel. But I mean, a guy that can have that versatility is a plus, and the special teams reps are obviously super important as well. All right, let's see who we got also. Safety. I mean, adding a guy like a, a big hitter like Bo Braid, he he would, you know, be a nice enforce, enforcer style of safety. Um, I wasn't too big on his film um, last year. Uh, he led the Terps in tackles the last two seasons. 369 snaps in the box, 201 at free safety, 104 from the slot. I labeled him more of a box type player, kind of more in the role of what Jordan Poyer did last year, the tail end of his career. Um, played on all four coverage units when it comes to special teams, which is obviously a big, big thing. But the thing with him that stuck up, stuck out was the missed tackles, 37 missed tackles over the course of his career, 35 in the last two seasons. Um, but he does fly into the box from depth, matches pretty well up with tight ends when we're talking the run game so he can be up near the line of scrimmage and win versus tight ends in the run game. Um, I, I think you saw a lot of the athleticism, that top end athleticism that he does possess flashed against Ohio State, that change of direction, that attacking style showed up a bunch. But yeah, the the missed tackles, he is, his eyes are a little lazy when it comes to play action and sticking to his assignment. Um, I think he gets lulled in uh, versus the run on those run action fakes. Um, and his, his processing of routes and route combinations aren't up to par for what the bills like to do as far as, you know, their pattern matching coverages. Um, I think Mustafa's kind of, you know, in the same type of boat, very good tackler and can do it from, from depth and whatnot, but no, they don't really stand out to me. Like I gotta have them at this point in the draft. Let's see who else is near the top here. Another guard I like is uh, Zinter from Michigan, but we did kind of address that already. Nugent Center, I do think he might be a guy I'm going to target later on. So what do you guys think? Should we add a guy like Boyd is still there? Another defensive tackle, 6'4", 3'17". Another big interior defensive lineman. See what we got here at edge. Did I go through edge already? But Xavier Thomas, he's a guy that has kind of, you know, caught some uh, attention here the last few weeks. Be another nice edge player to add to the rotation. No receivers really quite standing out here. What tackles? I say Adams, Foster. Okay, yeah, no one really there either. All right, so let's go. Let's get you know more of that enforcer, special team side player. Let's go with Bo here from from Maryland. I do think um, you know Rap is going to get considerable time. Cam Lewis is probably going to be bouncing around a little bit, especially on special teams. I think adding a safety like that, um, at the very least, for special teams is uh, a solid pick and then you try to hope to develop him from the shoulders up the processing and recognizing how offenses want to attack him and the defensive scheme um i think coaching him up will uh could help him in that regard so i know the bills brought in clap to kind of be that ryan bates type player um but one guy that just stands out to me when i watch his it, his film was michigan center drake nugent undersized Super undersized, shorter player. He's under, I think he weighed in at 298. So he's a smaller player, but his game is just so reminiscent of Brian Allen, uh, the wrestler center for uh, the Rams when Cromer was there, like almost identical measurables. And I think that Nugent could be a really good backup and, and guy to develop, even though he is undersized. I do think he'd be a, a nice center to have um, down the road. 
um, if, you know, for example, if something happens to McGovern or Clapp and, you know, they do need a center, now he's a little different than we're talking measurables when we're talking, um, you're comparing him to McGovern and even to Clapp. It does seem like maybe the Bills want to commit to bigger, you know, centers and guys that can anchor. I do think Nugent for his size anchors really well, plays really good, you know, positional leverage and leverage. And I know Cromer was at his um at the Michigan Pro Day. Of course, there are a bunch of offensive linemen there, and they're one of those like blue blood powerhouse type programs that you know puts out some pretty good offensive linemen. I do think Nugent would be nice to have as a backup, as a guy to develop down the road. Once again, adding to that offensive line room, I, I just I like um, stocking offensive def- and defensive linemen for that matter. So you can, any edge guys that really stand out to you guys? McGregor, Harrell, Bird is interesting. No one really there. I'd like to add there as well. I think tackles. I think the Bills have like a pretty good rotation of developmental tackles here. Whether it's a uh, Garage Doyle, um, Vandemark, I, I think all of those guys are pretty solid players and developmental players that I think Cromer believes he can really mold in that regard for a long term play if possible. So what else do we need here, guys? Let's see. We got a safety last round. What about interior? Murphy, Logan Lee, Jordan Jefferson's another guy that. Saw down at the Senior Bowl. I do think he is a schematic fit for the Bills. I do think he fits what they want to do from a size standpoint. 6'4", 317, ideal prototype when you're talking uh, Bills defensive scheme. A good amount of games played, as you can see here, courtesy of PFF. Um, Especially if you're looking at by alignment, you can see he's got a little bit of everything. He's sometimes in the A gap, sometimes in the B gap. So sometimes he's... The nose tackle or shade defensive tackle over the center. Sometimes he's that three tech or four eye uh, in that B gap. So he he rotates in between both of those spots. And I again, I do think that the Bills should continuously add to that department in that that room. Let's see here. Corners. Struggling here with some of these corners, and I kind of like the 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 later round guys. Um, when it comes to the Bills scheme, you know, anyone from Pitt is probably going to get consideration 5'11, 190 with Devonshire there. Um, you know, Johnny Dixon is another name that's been down there. I haven't scouted too many guys at the corner position, especially if we're talking depth, but none of these guys really uh stand out. I'm I'm probably gonna go with Pritchett here just because he reminds me of a, a you know a good off corner with some length that will be decent you know in in coverage especially if we're talking off coverage kind of in that mold of you know levi wallace you know off corner a guy they can develop not someone you want to see up near the line of scrimmage a bunch but a guy that is is solid in off coverage if we're talking the bill scheme all right in the round six here Let's see some uh, other wide receivers that are popping up here. Not too many here. Let's take a look at the roster again. I think we're set at linebacker, so I don't think we'll really need anyone there. We got a corner last round and a nickel up in the air. Got our safety. I still think uh, I'm just stocking up at, you know, defensive line, whether that's D tackles, D ends, and offensive linemen, you know, restocking those rooms, bringing in that competition. Uh, another receiver wouldn't hurt, but I do think we're getting pretty uh, st- stacked up in that in that room there. Let's see. Took the center. I took the guard. Some interior off the line. Some centers there still on the board who I really like. But we got Nugent already, so we're straight there. Let's go back to interior. I'm still scouting for that. Gabe Hall is a guy that I think is definitely a Bills fit. 
six six, you know, two ninety range. Played for Aranda. Obviously, that's a big thing. I mean, McDermott drafts guys from Aranda when all them really meeting him. He takes takes his word at it pretty much. The guy you can get late. I don't mind getting him late. Let's see other names here. DeCorian Clark, another wide receiver. Gold is a speedster from what I saw on film. Limited, you know, sample with him when it comes to watching his game film. It's tough. There's, you know, a lot of center guard combos that we could get. What about some backup QBs to develop? Slovis, former USC product. Carter Bradley is a guy that that was slinging it. Jim Nagy posted something about him. You know, scouts really liking him. What position should we go for next, guys? Huh? Some other safeties are up there. Bring some competition. Hampton, Tyler Owens, Oladapo. I think he like he's a guy that's probably closer, you know, to early day three than you know late where they have him here, damn near undrafted. I think he's a guy you could get closer to the top of day three. Coleman's a guy I do think has some good traits for the tackle position. All right, let's look at let's let's bring in another receiver here. Let's go. Cephas is a guy that stands out in a lot of advanced metrics as well. UTSA product, 6'3, 185. 2.39 yards per route run. Drop rate is really, really low. 1.1% last year. Very good versus man coverage. He's a guy I like. You know, he's solid. He's he's nothing to write home about, but if you look at not even just these metrics, some of his advanced metrics, um, he stands out a bunch. So let's go with a decent sized guy, a little thin, 6'3, 185 ish. Um, let's go with him over gold. He's another guy that is a speedster, 2.54 yards per route run. Tough, tough, tough. Let's go with uh let's go with Cephas here. So I just don't know how the Bills are gonna make all these picks. It's difficult to do it, you know, in these type of situations, in these scenarios, like trying to draft that many guys. I think the Bills and, and Bean try to move up a couple times in that, you know, day two, early day three range so that they can unload some of these later picks or I mean another thing to keep in mind is these you know fifth sixth seventh rounders if there are guys on the trade market you know that's something that's been a trend the last few years is is getting guys that are veterans cheap for those day three picks some more I just always love watching <laughs> all of its alignment film Hunter Norzad's a guy that I think the Bills are going to really like. Another center guard combination. <clears throat> Bordellini as well. I'm going to go for guys who I think the Bills are going to like. So regardless of where they fall here, I don't care about what grade they give me. I want to get the guys I want to get. So I do. Th I'm targeting Gabe Hall. I think Norzad is also a very good pick for the Bills. Let's go with Norzad here and look for Gabe Hall in the next round or next pick. This is a position I wish we'd have gotten some, some looks at is defensive end. Let's go with let's go with Hall here. Probably going to get a terrible grade for this, right? Terrible grade. 
but I don't care. That's that's why this is fun. It's really just an exercise to see where guys fall and approaching it differently each time. That's what's so fun about this is looking at it from a different through a different lens for each each pick. All right. So last pick here. Where do we want to go? We want to go another safety. Oh, let's get Oladapo. That one's that one's easy. I do think he's a fake. I think he's a too big of a safety for the Bills scheme. Um, but I do think he is a fit. You know, I got to talk to him down at the senior bowl. Um, he's in that six one range, two seventeen. So I do think he's a little big. Uh, but he's always around the ball. They played quarters 42% of the time. He had 292 snaps in the box, 174 free safety, 278 in the slot. He does have some have some of that dimebacker uh, type ability where he could come down and be an extra linebacker in and around the box. I do think he fits the role more of a strong safety versus free. And I know the Bills tend to like having guys that are interchangeable. I think he's a little more niched down when it comes to playing safety, especially if we're talking the Bills scheme. Um, and I do think his explosiveness, you see it at times, it flashes, but I don't think you see it enough. Long speed, I, I'm not sure he quite has that if, you know, they're in quarters coverage and that slot goes vertically and it becomes man-to-man, -man, he's got to overtake it. I don't know if he has the long speed to stay uh, with those type of, um, you know, type of wide receivers or skill players. So, this is how it broke down. We stayed at 28. We took Brian Thomas in the second round, pick 60. We took Christian Haynes, McKinley Jackson, another defensive tackle uh, for the Bills to kind of round out that top four. Obviously, the Bills like to rotate their defensive lineman a bunch, so he's going to be a solid Jordan Phillips type addition. Add in that running back, Braylon Allen, that compliment to James Cook, I think was really important. You add uh, Bo Brady from Maryland, uh, a physical type safety. Uh, I do think, you know, he can add at the very least special teams early and try to groom him and develop him and to compete with that, you know, second tier and third tier of safeties. Drake Nugent, just a guy I like uh, his film. You know, he's just a guy, undersized player, plays with great leverage, able to anchor down, believe it or not, even being undersized. Pritchett's a, a corner that uh, I think can be that off type corner that the Bills have had in their scheme, a uh, taller type player um, in, in, in more of the Levi Wallace realm. Uh, Cephas, uh, I do think his name pops up a bunch when you're looking at advanced metrics. Uh, I had limited film for him. I didn't have too many games on him, but uh, someone that you can add to the wide receiver room. Hunter Norzad, another guy I just like uh, his film, and I've been studying interior offensive linemen in the last uh, week or so, so I'm kind of in recency bias when it comes to Nugent, um, Zach Zinter from Michigan, uh, Keegan from Michigan, uh, Norzad. Um, those are guys I studied in the last week or so. So probably some recency bias, you know, seeping in there. Gabe Hall, I mean, as soon as I saw him in day one at the Senior Bowl, and I knew with his measurables and scheme and, you know, program he's coming from under Dave Aranda, I just, there's just so many things that point to him being the process type. And same with Oladapo, for that matter, another safety late um, in this draft that we took from Oregon State, uh, a guy that fits the system, the culture, and the football IQ when we're talking, you know, coming from that scheme at Oregon State. And they gave us a B, which I thought it was going to be worse than that. But you can see I loaded up D-line and offensive line um, and then uh, adding to the safety rooms a couple times as well. But I think, you know, sliding guys like, you know, Brian Thomas in there, bringing him along slowly, he, he's ascending. You know, you can bring him in to be the vertical threat. And then you got your underneath players and Diggs and Samuel and Shakir and obviously – uh, Dalton Kincaid, I think that would be um, a fun compliment to add to the room. He's got that vertical game that the Bills sorely need when teams go to two high looks or those post uh, post high looks, those single high looks. I think he can help there. Christian Haynes, I think, is going to be a, a great addition to any team. He's got that nasty demeanor. Um, he's explosive, unfurls those hips in the run game um, and just can toss you know guys out of the club. And I think that Cromer would love to develop a guy like that. And you're talking the shift uh, offensively and defensively and how teams are starting to get more towards, you know, those power run games and downhill run games against these two high looks and how they're trying to stay ahead of defenses in those two high structures. I think Haynes can help uh, inside the box when we're talking uh, the run game, especially. Um, and, and so, yeah, I think this was a solid draft, guys. I think that some of the pieces that we added, 
could definitely help the Bills, you know, in uh, year one in, in roles, maybe not necessarily top end starters right away, but a, a year that they have to start stockpiling some of these rooms with them being up against the cap and, you know, think about long term, not just short term. Uh, some of these guys may get more time than others, but um, it, it's something they have to start thinking about long term because they are going to be up against the cap um, each and every year for the next few years. And so, not just thinking of short term, hey, you need to play this year, but thinking about long term and you know future, especially we're talking the wide receiver position. Thinking about, hey, who's going to be the next X on this team once Diggs, you know, is on the tail end of his career um, and he starts to shift more of, uh, you know, maybe a slot type player because I think he does have that ability late in his career to do that. You know, you got to start thinking about long term, not just short term. And I think some of these players round out both of those areas and uh, can make impacts even in year one in certain roles uh, under Joe Brady and under Bobby Babich, the defensive coordinator of the Bills. So let me know what you guys think of this draft. Uh, first one of the year, 1.0. Uh, so we're on the board. I'm going to do this from time to time. Uh, hopefully you guys uh, get something out of this and, and enjoy these uh, type of uh, you know situations and scenarios. Um, they're fun, but they're also, as you can see, the Bills have a ton of picks and it's going to be very difficult to make the roster. I mean, I want like you think about the percentages of of all these draft picks and and their percentages and possibilities of making the roster. It's going to be very difficult, but that's what you need. You got to have that competition and you got to add, you know, those impact players in year 1, but also guys that in year 3 are going to be your starters um, you know, from this draft class and you try to nail down a few from each draft class, but it's going to be very difficult for some of these guys to crack the lineup. But once again, stack for long term as well. So, hope you enjoyed that. Uh, let me know what you didn't like, uh, what moves uh, that you disagreed with. Um, again, next the next time we do this, I'll try to attack it from a different perspective. Um, but appreciate you guys tuning in. Always appreciate the support. And uh, make sure to like this video, leave us a comment, and subscribe to the Cover One YouTube channel. I'm Eric Turner, owner of Cover One, host of the film film room every Wednesday night. This week we we have a, a jam packed. Film room, we're talking Curtis Samuel, Austin Johnson, Casey Tuhill. Um, I mean, we have a bunch of signings that we need to go over, some visits and top to the you know, top 30 visits that we need to discuss and reasons behind it. Uh, so be sure to join us Wednesday at 7 p.m. Once again, thank you for joining us. And until our next breakdown, go Bills.